lab, uh, you will take a look at creating a Power BI desktop solution and then publishing that to the Power BI service. You, and then further, uh, I would like to show how you could install the Power BI personal gateway and then enable that to refresh the power, uh, refresh the data in the Power BI service directly from the data source. Uh, then further, uh, you will request an on-demand refresh and witness an instant update of the uh, dashboard to reflect the current data. So let's just uh, first, in, uh, first log in to Power BI. So I think I've already logged in. So uh, I have uh, just logged in and this is uh, in my Power BI, uh, my Power BI website. Now the next thing uh, I want to do is connect to the Power BI desktop and then further uh, create a data set, create a, uh, create a dashboard, uh, which I would publish to the Power BI website. So over here, I'm opening up the Power BI desktop solution. All right, so I have a Power BI desktop uh, and then let me save this and give it a name. Uh, I, this is going to be uh, a report by for gross revenue. Uh, I'm just going to create a name, gross revenue, and there it is. I'm saving it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the data uh, into the Power BI uh, desktop. So I'm going to get this data from a SQL Server database. I'm just going to put the credentials uh, to, uh, in fact, the name of the data source. And I have the option to either import or direct query. I'm just going to uh, choose import at this point and then click OK. So, So what it did is uh, it, you know, I have it basically brought all the tables from my data source, and uh, this is a set of data which represents uh, the U U.S. retail sales transactions. Uh, so I got the sales, region, product, and bunch of data. So I'm going to choose sales here because that's what I'm going to create this report on, and I'm just going to click edit, uh, which brings up the query editor. Uh, now, uh, I, I, I want to modify this data a little bit, uh, which makes sense uh, to the report. So uh, uh, I want to calculate the net revenue of each sales order. So I'm going to select the quantity, which is here. Uh, and then I'm going to also choose the unit price. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a multiplication column uh, where I want to multiply the unit price and quantity to create a new column. So I'm going to choose multiply here. And then if you go all the way to the right, it inserted a new column. And that is the gross revenue, which I'm, uh, which I'm interested in. So again, you, you guys have seen this before, um, but uh, it shows you uh, how easily you can create this uh, report from uh, with calculations and things like that. So I created the gross revenue. That's good. Now, I don't want all this. Uh, there's a lot of unnecessary columns I would like to remove. Uh, so I'm going to choose the order date uh, which I want. And I also want the gross revenue. And I'm going to right click and say remove other columns. So that brings me back just the order date and gross revenue. And those are the only columns I'm interested in. I'm going to add another column here as well. And this is going to be a custom column. And uh, I, I want to show the year when the uh, uh, year where that sale occurred. So I'm just, or the order occurred. So I'm going to put the, put a custom column with a, formula here and I'm going to uh, call that year and I'm going to also put the month so I also have another uh, 
custom uh, formula which I'm going to use it for the month so I got them So I got the year and the month. So in a minute, uh, yep, yeah, it just uh, refreshed. Now uh, I want to, you know, remove the order date. I think that's not needed here, so I'm going to remove that. So I got the gross uh, revenue year and the month. Now that's kind of how I want this data to look like. So from the home uh, home ribbon, I'm going to just, you know, close and apply. Uh, so it's just basically creating a connection in the data model and applying the changes. Uh, and in a minute, you will we will land in the report layout where I have those uh, the data sets behind the scene. So it's in fact importing the data. That's what I choose uh, when I initially created the report. And I had a choice to either use a direct query or import the data. I chose to import the data because there isn't much data at this point. Uh, so uh, it just got the data. Now I'm just going to create uh, a report layout. So over here, I'm going to call this um, US monthly sales because that's what it is. And uh, I'm going to choose the year as a filter. So from the field uh, under the sales, I'm going to choose year. Uh, and that came in here. And I really want it to look like a uh, uh, choice column where I can I can choose it so so I chose this visualization uh, a slicer visual, visualization which uh, enables me to choose what year I want now uh, in the other part of the report I want to choose the gross revenue so I have the gross revenue here make it a little bigger so uh, you know it it, uh, it fits better in the screen and then I am also going to choose the month because I want a month as well in this uh, chart. So, so right now I got the, uh, the gross revenue by month, uh, which is what I'm looking for. So that's good. Uh, I can, you know, uh, sort it by month because that makes sense. Uh, so as you can see, it's sorted by month, but it's uh, sort of descending. So I'm going to sort it uh, ascending by clicking Z to A. Uh, and I got that, um, you know, report which is uh, in an ascending order. Uh, so I got that, and I'm going to click save. So, so that's good. That's the report which I will be working on. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to publish that into Power BI. So I'm going to click publish, and uh, I say I need to be signed into the service, and I'm going to put the user ID and password. Yeah, and uh, I just uh, signed into Power BI, and uh, here I have the Power BI. Uh, it's published to the Power BI, and I can click here to open the report which I just published uh, into the Power BI by uh, clicking on the gross revenue report. So as, as you can see here, click of a button, I just uh, published that to Power BI. The next thing I'm going to do is I have this report right here. I'm going to pin this uh, visual uh, to a new dashboard. So I click on pin visual and uh, it asks me whether I need an existing dashboard or a new dashboard. I'm going to choose a new dashboard here and I'm going to call it US monthly sales. And then click pin. So it essentially just uh, pinned the visualization to the uh, to the dashboard. So I got a new dashboard called US monthly sales where I have that particular visualization. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download the Power BI gateway. So if you click right click or uh, right on the top here, you have a download button where I have this thing called the Power BI gateway. And the Power BI Gateway is essentially what will help you to connect uh, this uh, report directly to the data source. So when you click on that, it takes you to a website and it gives you two options. You got the Enterprise Gateway as well as the Personal Gateway. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to use the Personal Gateway. Uh, and we have, uh, in, in the earlier sessions, we talked about the differences between Enterprise Gateway and the Personal Gateway. So I'm going to click uh, and, and then run this. Uh, it's just basically preparing to install the personal gateway. 
and in a, uh, and it just goes through a, a, a bunch of steps uh, and then uh, the personal gateway uh, will be installed after I accept uh, the terms and you know licenses checkbox uh, in a minute it's just going to come up okay now uh, I just walk me through a step I'm going to accept the licenses uh, accept the terms in the license agreement click next uh, and it just asked me for where I want to install the gateway. I'm going to take the default uh, location and I'm going to click install. So now the uh, now this Power BI gateway has been successfully installed, and I can just uh, click simply click launch to start the Power BI gateway. So at this point, uh, it's the the gateway is is is, is started. Uh, so I just need to click next obviously I need to sign in I'm going to sign in in a minute so I signed in and it's uh, it's going to further take a few few seconds to configure okay um, it's complete and it says the gateway is up and running so I'm just going to click finish and at this point the gateway is up and running now let me go back to the the report and then if you go to the report and then go to the settings page of my report I got uh, multiple things here uh, 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 and one of the setting uh, right here you see is is the data set and that's where uh, you can actually configure your uh, data set and how uh, you can set the refresh of your data set so I'm I'm uh, I'm actually going to be talking about the gross revenue so I, I chose the gross revenue that's because that is the report which I created so once I create that once I ch choose that then uh, the uh, you got the gateway connection and, and the data source credentials so uh, in the data source credentials uh, notice that the credentials are invalid because um, you know it just says that you know I'm not I don't have the correct credentials so what I really need to do is I need to enter the data source credentials so I just click uh, credentials here and then pretty much I would I so in the authentication, I'm going to choose basic here. This, uh, you know, I got Windows and uh, and basic. I'm just going to enter the credentials, um, and I'll come back in a minute. So at this point, I successfully connected. I put the credentials and uh, the uh, to the data source, and uh, I have it right here. Make sure the credentials have the right permissions to the data source. Now, uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to, uh, uh, you know, set a data refresh. So if you click on the scheduled data refresh, there's multiple options here. Uh, not, no, notice that it is possible to configure automatic refresh or uh, you can actually have, uh, you, you can actually co configure the refresh on an automatically on a scheduled basis so you can say you know at what uh, time you want to set it up so all you need to do is click yes and then you can set the frequency by which the data is up uh, is is up to date there's also uh, a refresh history link um, so if you uh, want to see how often this is refreshed you can actually click here uh, to get the data so now if I go back to my report right here uh, so just go to the US monthly sales report so the next thing I want to do is I'm, uh, I want to uh, refresh the data so you go to the data set click on this dot dot button here and then you can click refresh and then basically it just prepares for the refresh and uh, as you can see you know the data has changed from what it used to be because it uh, it's in fact you know spinning right now so uh, it hasn't changed yet but in a minute you will see that the data has uh, has been refreshed 
At this point, I'm going to run uh, some queries to update the data. So you could actually see uh, that the you know data uh, in the dashboard will change. So I'm just going to run a query and I'm just executing the query. Basically, it's just uh, getting some data from uh, a CSV file and it's inserting into the uh, sales table. And I also want to uh, write a script so that you know I have access to this uh, the, to this database. So now, if I if I refresh uh, this data, uh, you should see that the um, you, you should see that the chart ha chart will change because it's got you know more data in the table. Let's give it a second and let's come back in a minute. As you can see, the refresh has changed and obviously there's a lot more data. Earlier I had only seven months of data for CY 2015. Now I have you know 12 months of data uh, for CY 2015. So that's it and thank you so much.